So many of us dream of living a life of travel and adventure, but it's also so important to have a place to call home, somewhere to retreat to at the end of the day and a space that we can really call our own. That is exactly what this next couple have created for themselves, turning an old schoolie into a beautiful home on wheels. Hi, hey, Francesca, how are hey, you? Hey, Grace, good, how are you? Lovely to meet you. G'day, Nick, how's it going, mate? Nice to meet you. This is such a great looking bus. How was it that you both came to decide to live in a schoolie? So it started with a documentary we watched about a couple that was traveling around the United States and late one night on the couch, kind of looked at each other and said, hey, could we do that? And after sitting on it for a day or two, we were all in and a month later we had the bus. What was it that really inspired you to just dive into that kind of lifestyle? I think it was a couple of things. Uh, we didn't really need all the space that we had in our house in Chicago. We liked the freedom to explore and go adventuring. And I think we were kind of just feeling like we were in a rut, you know, with the job and life. And this was kind of a way out to go and try a couple new things. I think, honestly, we were miserable in our jobs at the time. And it was our way out. When we first met, it was all career oriented. I yeah. mean, 60 plus hours a week, saving money for, you know, what? what? I think we had the adventure in us the whole time. We would love to go for hikes, walking the dogs, going out on the weekends anyways. Yeah. But if we could you know, make that the, the focal point and the center of the lifestyle, I think we were both in for that. Yeah, the fact that we can just get up and go anywhere we want. You know, most people work their whole lives saving up this big nest egg of money with hopes of you know, traveling when it's finally time for retirement. And personally, you know, we've seen our grandparents get to that point where they have the money and have the time, but no longer have the energy or, you know, the age to go do it. We don't have and the body so anymore. <laughs> we may not have the money right now, but we definitely have, you know, the body and the energy and we have the time and, you know, the money will come and go. So we'll, we'll find it as we go, but we've got the other two pieces of the puzzle right now. And now tell me about the bus, because this just looks so cool. It was a real school bus. Uh, actually, kids riding in it in North Carolina it was in commission. Um, we actually found it at an auction. So first off, you can tell it's a lot bigger than a normal school bus. So we do have a roof raise on there. And then everything you see on the roof allows it to be off grid. Not that we're always off grid, but it does give us the options like where we're at today in the mountains. We have five 100 watt solar panels, which is more than enough for us. And then you can kind of see the chimney back there as well. We do have a wood burning stove. So when it gets cold here in Colorado, we're completely off the grid. Just got to get a little bit of wood and we can heat it right up. And what do you do for water? So water, we have an 80 gallon tank in there. Uh, that's probably the only reason we have to come back to civilization. Once we're out of water, we're out of food. Up. Yeah, we got to fill up, dump the tanks. Um, but other than that, 80 gallons can go pretty far. And it looks like here on the exterior of the bus, you've got quite a bit of storage space as well. This was one of the few school buses that came with it pre-built in there. Uh, some of the other ones, you have to do the addition yourself. And so this was nice. Instead of storing all the solar and the batteries and everything else on the interior of the bus, it's all out here, which left us a lot more room on the inside. And we didn't have to pay extra to have bins installed or anything like that. So we actually searched for a bus specifically that had these bins. So what length is the bus? So the bus is almost as big as a standard bus can go. It's 38 feet long, seven and a half feet wide, and then has the 20 inch roof raise on it. So it's quite spacious on the inside. Well, this bus looks like she is absolutely ready for adventure and I cannot wait to see what you've done inside. Can we check it out? Come on yeah. in. All right, thank you. This just looks so cool. I love all of the stonework that you've done on the entrance. Yeah, so, I mean, we have stone in the back in the bathroom and I just wanted it kind of to all flow together. And the first thing that you see, I don't want it to be bus steps. I want this, though I love that it is a bus, I don't want anyone to know that inside it is a bus. Standing in here right now, this certainly does feel like a home and not a school bus. And there's some really interesting things that you've done to help make that happen, like the front of the bus here where you've turned the whole dashboard into a couch. That is such a great idea. Yeah, and it was actually super easy and it was our dog's idea. Um, so we were just driving and our dogs kept going up there and they would sit out there, look out the window. And I was like, well, they need something comfy to sit on. And so I just did a DIY cushion, threw it up there and draped a blanket on top, threw some pillows and called it a day. And then you've still got your driver's station here. Talk to me about this. 
Well, I wish I could say I had the comfy air ride seat, but that was a budget thing. Maybe it'll come soon, but that's kind of my station. We try to hide it when it's just the homey feel so that it doesn't actually look like the bus again. The steering wheel is what it is, um, but that is definitely where the dogs like to sit. Sometimes Magoo likes to hop right on the driver's seat and oh, think he's the driver. That is his chair. <laughs> and then you've got a very nice, comfortable looking couch here as well. Yeah, this is probably a lot bigger than most other people with school buses will ever go. It's a 10 foot couch and it pulls out to form one massive bed. Enough for two humans and three dogs. Otherwise we can have people spend the night with us in the bus as well. Yeah. Great, and it looks like you've built quite a lot of storage in there as well. Yeah, so one of the nice things about the underbins was being able to put a lot of the solar stuff outside. We have all of our fresh water in here, so when it gets cold in Colorado and some of the other places we travel, it doesn't freeze. So that way we still have good access to water, and then under this whole half of the couch is just storage for games, clothing, uh, whatever we need it for. And now tell me about your kitchen, because this looks so great. This was probably the most important part for us. This was big when we got our first home, and it was definitely going to be the centerpiece of the bus as well. We like to cook, and we spend a lot of time in the kitchen. And so when we were doing our layout, we knew we needed a very long kitchen, lots of counter space. Um, we went back and forth on what kind of fridge to do, and we wanted a spacious one, and so... This kind of just was our dream kitchen. Going with the fridge underneath allowed more cabinet space. The original design was going to be, you know, a traditional fridge, but as you can see, we have yeah. a massive countertop, a big stove, basically a regular apartment size one. And you've got to love the butler sink. It is very nice. We were big HGTV fans, and when we saw the farmhouse sink, we we're like, well, we can't have it in our house right now. Couldn't afford it. It'll definitely be in the bus, though. Oh, yeah, definitely. That's another cool thing about downsizing and doing tiny is we've never really settled into our homes and we've never really been able to show ourselves in our homes like this and get everything we wanted and by going smaller we were able to actually make our dream home like I don't ever get jealous or want anyone else's home I got mine so yeah yeah and look at that fireplace that's probably one of my top two favorite things about the bus it gets cold here in Colorado and having an actual wood burning stove and being able to be off grid. That thing is way more than we needed for this tiny space. It gets really you hot get in hot here. fast, which we're grateful for. Yeah. <laughs> but you almost have to open windows with the fire because it's it does its job. Yeah. Let's say that. Is the place quite well insulated? It is. Yes. We do have spray foam all throughout the bus. And then these windows are RV windows specifically to trap the heat and the cold air, depending on the season. But with that being said, it does get cold here in Colorado. And I see you do have the air conditioning as well. We do. It doesn't work off grid. So we do have a generator just for those very hot Back days up. or for when we're plugged in. Yep. But it is definitely nice to have. It was a good splurge. Oh, yeah. And what do we have further back here? So this is our shower and our toilet and the shower is probably my second favorite part right behind the wood burning stove and that's because we have the nebbia i don't know many other buses that have this i don't even know if most people even know this exists but i'm super nerdy and i spend a lot of time on kickstarter and i remember when this first came out and i loved the idea about the california draught saving water and then we tried it and not oh only gosh. is it really economical and help us save water for the bus, but it's an awesome experience <laughs> to take a shower and it feels like a nice warm hug. Yeah. I can't say enough good things about it. No, I agree. It is amazing. At first I was like, really? You're in a, this much for a shower? It's worth it. Yeah. Especially living this lifestyle. And the stone and tile work in the shower is so beautiful. That was our first time and might be our last time oh tiling. Oh gosh. Well, <laughs> it, we did it in the dead of winter and then yeah. right on like the box, don't do it in this type of degrees. Um, so that wasn't smart. So we had a struggle with it, but we're so happy with how it turned out. I mean, we love the stonework. It matches the front of the bus and it kind of just flows with our entire theme in this house. So yeah, we're really happy with how the shower did turn out. And then over the other side, we've got the composting toilet and the vanity in there. Yeah, so um, it's it's kind of tiny, but it works for us. I mean, we've never done the black water, and we didn't really want to do a black water tank. And so we just thought, let's everyone's doing the composting toilet. Let's try this out. And we ended up with Nature's Head. And we are really happy with having the full sink and cabinet. We have the nice big mirror. It makes the room even bigger. Um, and then we have little baskets behind the compost toilet that just hold our little towels to dry our hands off. And it kind of just all, once again, flows in the design. I'm very big on the design and everything flowing. 
And what lies behind the door? So a lot of people, when they see pictures on Instagram, they think this is where the bus ends, but lo and behold, our bedroom. You've got a full bedroom behind there. That is really neat. Yes, so this is kind of the bedroom area and where we keep our clothes, but we probably spend the majority of the time up at the front of the bus. Living in a schoolie like this as well, having the option of a room where you can shut the door and have a little bit of private space must be so nice as well. It is yeah. just over 200 square feet. Most of the time we're on the same page, but when we do need free time, <laughs> it, is, it is nice to have your own room or room to put the dogs in and, and having that door to kind of cut it off does come in handy. So how long have you been living in the bus now? I think it's been a little over six months now. Yeah. And I mean, it was definitely a rough start. We started in the dead of winter, but after winter went away, it's been just smooth sailing for this, the most part. The summers out here have been perfect. We're starting to get a hang of all the different things that can and will go wrong. But the first seven months have been fantastic and we don't see us stopping this lifestyle anytime soon. Really, any problem we come up against, you know, we kind of work together and we've been able to solve anything from, you know, the engine not turning on and getting stuck on the side of a 14 or in the middle of nowhere to just building simple furniture, you know, to really style and design the inside. We've learned about solar and plumbing and water and wood and all things that, you know, me as a sales guy, I never knew any of this stuff. And so we've really learned a lot and been able to tackle a lot of problems along the way. And now let's talk budget. What was the cost of realizing this dream? So the materials, if you could do everything on your own, were about $30,000. Uh, all in, we were just under sixty. dollars and compared to owning a house in the Denver area or in the Chicago area, this, I mean, it's not even comparable. And a house on foundations will never give you options like this home has. Without a doubt, once this is 100% paid off, really it's just gonna be the open road for the two of us and seeing where we can take it. I mean, the bus and tiny living, I mean, it really came together for all the reasons we kind of talked about, the money, you know, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on a home that you don't really need that space, you don't need that big of a home. The space itself, not even just the money, you know, 1,400 square foot home where two of the rooms haven't ever been moved into, just boxes sitting there yeah. versus, you know, 200 square feet of every foot being taken care of and knowing um, where it is. And the fact that, you know, we were in the suburbs of Chicago and granted we, we grew up there, it is home, both our families are there, but there was so much adventure left in us that was either going to have to wait for the weekends or retirement and that really didn't sit well with us. So to be able to put all three of those things together, that's you know what bus life and the tiny life is really meaning for us. And I'm sure there's a lot more yeah. we're going to discover as we move forward. But that was really the base and the foundation of why we really started looking at all of it in the first place. And another big thing for me, um, it was just, I am a huge homebody and I do like to spend a lot of time in my space, in my home, and so I wanted it to feel homey and to be like us. And the best part is that everywhere we go, I can travel, we can go anywhere, and I don't have to have the stress of, well, where are we gonna stay? Well, it's not gonna feel like home. My dogs aren't gonna feel at home. Whereas in this space, we're always at home, everywhere we go. This is such a beautiful project. I really love the way that you have taken this school bus and really made it feel like a home. Thank you so much for sharing it Thanks, with me. Thanks, Bryce. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Nick and Francesca have done such an incredible job with building this home. This is a place where once you're inside, you would never guess that this was an old schoolie. It is spacious, it is beautiful, it's stylish but the wheels still mean that this is a home that is ready for a whole lot of adventure. And I'm sure there is lots of excitement to come in this couple's future.